Welcome to new Team CGC 9.8 video. So I, I think if you're buying comic books right now, it's a really smart move to kind of think about value. Um, you know, certainly the CGC 9.8 comic book market has really been heating up lately. So uh, I want to kind of rack my brain and come up with some value-oriented CGC 9.8 comic books to invest in. And like when, I've, when I'm saying value, you know, I don't mean like cheap. Like all these books aren't like 50 or 60 bucks or whatever in the CGC 9.8. You know, what I mean about value is sort of in the era and given the rarity in the CGC 9.8, you know, does the price look good given those things? So it's kind of an individual case-by-case -case basis, which we'll definitely get into here. And uh, this video goes really well with um, our ice cold video, kind of cold as ice video that we did uh, a couple of days ago because, yeah, like I said, in this kind of hot environment where a lot of books are going for like, uh, 40, 50 percent, you know, more in the CGC 9.8 than I've been sort of used to in the last six to 12 months. Uh, so it, you know, it makes sense to kind of look for some uh, value-oriented uh, picks in uh, this environment. So we'll get into a full list of seven here with some honorable mentions. So the first book is a classic. Yeah, Star Wars number one. And um, so kind of you get the, you know, first appearances here, kind of Luke, Leia, Darth Vader in comic books and the adaptation of A New Hope. Uh, on the census, we'll take a look at Star Wars number one. This is a 30 cent uh, variant as well. There's obviously, there's the 35 cent variant where apparently there was only like a thousand or something of those printed. Or um, I forget the exact number, but it was really, really low. So that one's really expensive. This one more attainable, the 30 cent variant in the CGC 9.8 white pages. Yeah, great. Lucky to have such a great copy. Uh, 620 of these in the CGC 9.8 blue label. 7.4% the CGC 9.8 ratio. So a 1977 book, but still seven, only 7.4% of all graded copies are CGC 9.8. It's still a really rare book. There's a lot of these graded, really popular books. Um, so why Star Wars on sort of a value-oriented um, you know list here? I just think number one with Star Wars, there's like so much potential, like. A lot of long-term potential, I think, to get a 9.8, CGC 9.8 top-rated version of, uh, you know, Star Wars number one. I just think because the brand's so big, um, and we will talk about prices here in a sec, but I think there's still, um, you know, a chance for the price to really increase over time because it's such a big brand. And even the, the brand now is, you know, there's a lot of kind of uh, hate out there for how Disney has handled a lot of the new Star Wars movies. And I'm kind of sort of on that side, like I certainly haven't enjoyed the last few Star Wars movies, to be honest. Like Rogue One's cool when they do the one-offs, but when they try to sort of get it all in in one uh, movie, it usually just doesn't work uh, that well. But I think, you know, Disney, a billion dollar corporation, they're going to kind of get it right at some point. Still so much potential with Star Wars. So, uh, prices. Um, I had saw an auction, it ended, and it was, um, an, uh, yeah, a, kind of a a low price, a one week auction, so a good idea of kind of the fair market value right now. 1250 for a Star Wars 1 the CGC 9.8. You know, I had sort of been used to them going for um, sort of 900 around there in an auction. Um, but with this Mandalorian uh, show, it's, it's really just kind of heating up Star Wars in general. Star Wars 42 especially. But uh, Star Wars 1 hasn't heated up as much, and given that like I said, it's just the uh, brand is so big. It looks really good on the census. Yeah, pretty rare. Uh, you get a one of 620 collector item here for... That's not that much for like how popular Star Wars is. Like, I'm surprised there's not way over a thousand of these in the CGC 920. So it is a pretty rare book. And um, I think one that, yeah, that fits on a value list. And, you know, even though it's increased in price here, maybe 10 to 20% here in the last little bit, I think um, the long-term potential of this book is there. Like, yeah, sure, like maybe, um, you know, it won't do that well, and you can expect it over the next 10 or 20 years to, you know, maybe reach up to 2000 bucks in the CGC 9.8, but I think there's that wild card where, you know, this could even go on a run, and if you got that really long-term time horizon like me, um, you could see, you know, maybe over 2000 and possibly even a lot more uh, in the, you know, very long-term future, kind of 20, 30 years. 
Um, because yeah, Disney has the Star Wars property. Yeah, they bought the Lucas Films, so there's just so many billions of dollars behind Star Wars, and at some point that's going to pay off. And I think lately, yeah, the popularity sort of lulled, so you could still kind of get this at a decent price. And I think it is one of those where it still is a pretty decent price, even though the kind of stimulus check infused environment right now. Uh, so next book is uh, Uncanny X Men One Forty One. Yeah, Part One: A Days of Future Past. I got a nice copy here, luckily, a newsstand version copy. Uh, it took me a while to find this one at a decent price, and I got it just under 400 bucks, like, yeah, like 398 I guess we'll call it 400 <laughs> um, So, part one of Days of Future Past, such a classic storyline. You get kind of the first appearances of, like, all the alternate future X-Men and stuff like that, so. But uh, for me, a cover that's super nostalgic, I think for a lot of other people, it's really nostalgic too, and even though it's not like a real huge first appearance or anything like that. Like it's first appearance of the second Phoenix, Rachel, and all those like alternative future X-Men kind of thing. Uh, but we'll look on the census here. Uh, 613 CGC 9.8s in the blue label. So kind of a one of 613 collector item. I'm such a, such a nostalgic cover. Part of the John Byrne sort of Terry Austin um, Uncanny X-Men run that everyone loves and I love too. 14.5% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So a really good, like, legit investment grade ratio. And I put this on the list because given that 14.5% ratio, you're seeing a lot of books that have don't have that low of a ratio that are, like, 600 bucks. Like, you know, some of these, I know, um, well, there's a lot of books that come to mind. We won't get into that. But um, a lot of books right now with a similar CGC 9.8 ratio looking like this, uh, whereas this book purchased mine for 400 Maybe right now, because it is a little hotter, something, a, um, a fair price for this book, uh, because the market's a little bit hotter, a fair price for this book might be, yeah, a little over 400 so 425 This is the newsstand, too. Yeah, um, yeah, you know what? I think in the direct, you could probably get it still under 400 even in this environment, I think. You know, maybe if you want the newsstand for some reason, like I did, because I have a 142 newsstand, I wanted a 141 to match. Uh, so I was able to do that. Uh, yeah, so I think right now, under 400 for a direct version, of maybe a little bit over for the newsstand. But even at this this year, I don't even think the newsstand's more rare. Like, it's it might even be less rare. Like, yeah, so maybe you can just aim for that 400 price. And uh, I don't think it's taken off as much. Even with um, X-Men coming back to the MCU... Like, a lot of those hot X-Men books seem to be, um, you know, the Mr. Sinister, the Gambit books, uh, maybe the Jubilee books, but this one still doesn't seem to be as heated up, so one to consider in this environment. All right. Third book. Okay, uh, next book is one I don't have, so it's, um, an, uh, the only, I don't have in a raw either. It's uh, Iron Man 170. This is the first full appearance of James Rhodes as Iron Man. So yeah, I think, I mean, this book is a cool, you know, key issue to have that's affordable in this era, I think. It's a good way to kind of add to your Iron Man collection, too, because uh, I know for me, um, it's sort of this one and, like, Iron Man 282, that first War Machine book. Um, those are the kind of two uh, moderns that kind of stick out that are, you know, pretty attainable. And then before that, it's like the first Thanos, like Iron Man 55, but... A book that's pretty overlooked and I think fits on a value list because I did get a recent completed listing for this one in the CGC 9.8 as well, we'll get into. But uh, 112 on the CGC census in the blue label. And the CGC 9.8, 112. And 43% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So, you know, not particularly rare in the 9.8, this one. Um, it's more just about the coolness of the cover and you kind of get that cool first appearance of a kind of first full James Rhodes as Iron Man. And uh, so I did see a CGC 9.8 completed listings just recently for 150 bucks. Yeah, it was just over 150 bucks. Um, I think that's a you know a great price to kind of get this book. It's a cool cover too. It's like him putting on the Iron Man mask, like a, a really kind of cl classic cover that has potential. I think the wild card with this book is you know James Rose is kind of in the Avengers movies and everything, and they're you know you never know, but like if Robert Downey Jr you know, doesn't come back to do um, uh, Iron Man, maybe they bring in James Rhodes as Iron Man and this book gets a nice pop and just a cool one to have too. Like, again, I don't really have 
any Iron Man books. I don't have that Iron Man War Machine book either, but this book and the, that uh, War Machine book are really just uh, two to kind of consider right now that are definitely in that sort of value kind of oriented uh, vein, I guess. All right, next book is one I have in the raw, and I almost had it in the 9.8. I'll tell you about that. But uh, Incredible Hulk 377, yeah. First first new Hulk, you know, first, first kind of smart Hulk, where, um, you know, Hulk kind of before this issue was just like, oh, Hulk angry, uh, like all that. But now, you know, he can kind of be a little bit smarter, and they can do a little bit more with the story, after uh, Hulk stories, I guess, after this issue. But uh, kind of a classic early 90s book that um, is well collected, but, you know, just a cool one to have, and I think it hasn't heated up like a lot of some of these other books, and we'll look on the census here, though, uh, 378, CGC 9.8's out there, uh, so 1 of 378, in the blue label, that is, too, and yeah, I'll tell you how I almost got one in a sec, 29.8%, uh, the CGC 9.8 ratio, so decent for, like, an early 90s, it's not too bad, like, it could be higher, to be honest, so pretty decent rarity in the CGC 9.8. I purchased one of these, um, and it literally, it came in, um, uh, shipping, and it was, like, wrapped in cardboard, terrible, you know, no box, just wrapped in cardboard, terrible packaging, and the case was cracked, so that was, um, I don't know if I was, uh, doing the channel at that time or not, but I had to do a refund, and it kind of worked out refund-wise, but never got it, and then I haven't since bought another one, so, um, one, you know, I would, you know, I probably should have this one, and I almost did, um, in the CGC 9.8, and it, yeah, it's just one, like, I wouldn't expect any crazy gains out of it or anything, but it's, you know, one that, I, yeah, we'll talk about price really quick, um, I paid for mine, it was, like, under 120, and I thought that was a good deal, like, every now and then, you'll see one of these go for pretty close to 100 in an auction, um, or something like that, but most of them sell for kind of getting up to sort of 140, I would say sort of 130, 140, so if you can get it around 120 with, like, decent shipping, I think that's a definitely kind of a value-oriented pick uh, in this environment, certainly. Yeah, and I don't think it's really taken off as much as uh, some other books here. All right, next book is uh, Silver Surfer 44. Yeah, uh, so, you know, obviously with this one, the first appearance of the Infinity Gauntlet, and I think the Infinity Gauntlet, although every now and then you hear like a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a weapon, like, you know, it's not even a first appearance or something like that. But for me, I kind of take the complete opposite end of that thing. This is the only like noted first appearance of a weapon ever, like pretty much ever in all of comic books. So it's so special. To me, this is like a really special issue, I think. Um, I think right now is a great time to buy it. It's such a like a great value kind of oriented type pick because... You know, you had all those Avengers movies, Guardians of the Galaxies, everything with the um, Infinity Gauntlet in it. Uh, so those are kind of, you know, that's done. Avengers Endgame's over. and um, So now, yeah, you could get really decent prices on this. And I think anywhere from um, 150 to 175 is a really good price. But we'll look on the census. Um, 257, CGC 9.8s in the blue label. So you kind of a 1 at 257. Collector item and 23.6% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So of all graded copies, 23.6% of them are CGC 9.8s. And for an early 90s book, that is actually not bad at all. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good sort of 9.8 rarity for a book that's sort of around 150 to 175. So that's where you kind of get into these value uh, calculations. You know, pretty rare for an early 90s book. Um, but only 150, 175 for a first appearance that I think is very, very special and kind of gets some unnecessary slack, maybe, because it's just a weapon, but really, I think that's what makes it so special. It's like the only weapon out there that's really ever been cared about or noted as a first appearance, so I just think it's got more potential there, and, um, you know, that was sort of my thinking, um, when I, uh, purchased my, uh, Silver Server 44s, because, yeah, I got two of them here. And, um, a good, just quick lesson, um, I had purchased one of these during Avengers Endgame, so, yeah, right, kind of, I think I might have started the channel, it was, like, right around that time, but I wasn't quite as disciplined, so I didn't, wasn't, you know, watched a movie and kind of, you know, uh, disobeyed one of my rules where I kind of went out and bought the book after the movie, and I paid, uh, it was, like, two thirty about, uh, for one of them. And then six months later, or like, yeah, six to eight months later, it was like six months after Avengers Endgame was out of theaters, I bought another one, 
and that one was 154 in an auction. So just gives you an idea of a lot of the things we talk about where, hey, if you see it, if there's a movie, a trailer, or a show that everyone's talking about, if you go and buy that comic, I mean, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper six months to later, or to a year later, because that promotion doesn't last forever. It's yeah, it's kind of a, you know, a, not a permanent thing, certainly. All right, uh, next one here on the list: value oriented, nine point eight to buy. Batman Adventures Mad Love. Yeah, I know I talked a little bit about this one, but it it really illustrates like all the points of being a value oriented book. Um, so I don't have one in the CTC 9.8, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm, I'm really actually hunting for this one. This is one I'm doing more searches on, and I, I did include it in my, uh, you know, the four CTC uh, 9.8s I don't have, but I want, or I did a video like that a little bit ago. Uh, so in the CTC 9.8 blue label, there's 253 of these, so not too many out there. But uh, yeah, 17.5% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So for a 90s book, that is just extremely low. It's really, really low. Um, so when you think about that really low CGC 9.8 ratio, um, which is lower than a lot of 80s books that are like five, 600 bucks, um, it's certainly lower than a lot of modern books that are not nearly as rare, don't nearly have that low 9.8 ratio. Um, and uh, the last auction I had saw of this book was $375, and uh, there was a completed listing too for uh, $399.99. So, yeah, $375 in an auction, I think basically $375 uh, to $400 I think is a really fair price for this book, and this EGC 9.8 white page is looking pretty good. Um, like another thing too is um, I, the uh, Batman Harley Quinn book uh, with Alex Ross, that's like a late 90s book, this kind of a mid 90s book. This is so much more rare on the census. I think the Harley Quinn book, it's like 40 something percent, the 9.8 ratio, whereas this is 17.5%. So 17.5% of all graded copies are 9.8s, whereas the other books, 45% of all graded copies are 9.8s. So this one's much more rare, and they were almost like the same price for a while there. Like Batman and Harley Quinn was 300, this was like 325 maybe. So I just think, you know, Batman Harley Quinn will probably be 300-ish for quite a while. This one, I think, has a chance to get to like five, six, seven hundred 700-ish. Uh, I think it's a really good value, yeah. It's not as rare as Batman Adventures 12 in the 9.8. Uh, Batman Adventures 12 has a little bit lower ratio, so I don't really expect it to like kind of get near that. But another thing, too, to really love about this book over uh, Batman Adventures 12 even is uh, this has a Bruce Timm cover. And Bruce Tim and Paul Dini do the story, and those are just the two like animated Batman legends. Like uh, certainly Bruce Tim, I think, and this cover is awesome. Yeah, I love this way more than Batman Adventures Twelve. So kind of just yeah, in sort of the analysis sense, uh, looking at the census and the price, it ticks all the boxes. And then got the great artist and the great cover, and uh, second appearance of Harley Quinn ever, and the origin of Harley Quinn. So you know, still certainly a key issue. Okay, and the last one, it's uh, one we talked about recently, but it, again, it just illustrates exactly what value-oriented CGC 9.8s are all about. So the Guardians of the Galaxy 1, we'll get quickly into this. Uh, from 2008, this is kind of the first full appearance and origin of the new team, Guardians of the Galaxy, from like the MCU movies that we all love. And um, yeah, this is I think it's a really good overlooked book. Um, you know, you don't see too many people kind of showing it off on their Instagram or uh, on the internet or anything. Uh, on the census, though, 164 CGC 9.8s in the blue label, and 23.4% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So, yeah, for a book that came out in 2008, that rarity in the 9.8 is very, very low. Like, even, you know, Ultimate Fallout 4 is about 32%. This one's 23.4%, so the lower the better. So of all graded copies, 23.4% of them are CGC 9.8s. So, um, you know, given that really low uh, CGC 9.8 ratio for its age, and you got to keep that in mind, the, the era that this book came out in. It's a 2008 book, so it was kind of a new modern book. Um, still seeing on GoCollect that this book is like 170 bucks ish You can still get it for kind of that range. I think we're in between the Guardians of the Galaxy's movies. It's a great timing to kind of buy it right now. So if you can get it, I would even pay upwards of uh, $200 for this in the CGC 9.8 right now. 
because, uh, yeah, again, I just don't know of any, I was saying this on the other video, I'm not sure of any other modern book that's kind of a first appearance that has that low of a CGC 9.8 ratio mixed in with a really cool first appearance. Um, and then, yeah, you're still getting it at that. It, it reminds me a lot of just Ultimate Fallout 4, like, six to eight months ago, where I did the comparisons, and I was like, wow, Ultimate Fallout 4, CGC 9.8 ratio is very low compared to all its competitors. It, competitors, It's pretty much the lowest, yet the price is kind of the lowest, so I always thought it could catch up to kind of NYX number three. And I think this book has a lot of catching up to do to, like, even um, it was Young Avengers number one, like that book generally goes for about 250. I see a lot of those go for 250. This one going for under 200. That Young Avengers book, it's like a 68% CG. Like it's a really high modern, more what a normal modern book would be, uh, CGC 9.8. But um, so you kind of, I think you, you know, that's the first Young Avengers. This is the first new team Guardians of the Galaxy. I think this could easily be equal to that, or probably should be even 50 to 100 dollars more than that. So. Given that comparison, this could be 350 maybe. So, yeah, I just think it fits in a value-oriented list, especially in the CGC 9.8, because, yeah, really kind of focus in on that low CGC 9.8 ratio and a great first appearance. I mean, yeah, it really just um, kind of sticks up for me. As far as modern books, like books after 2000, that's really like my main buy right now. It's just the facts say it, plus you get a great, you know, first full appearance in the origin with a really cool cover that... I think it continues to grow on me, too. That cover is really cool, actually. So, Okay, that was the seven main list. Now, we'll get into some honorable mentions. So, um, Wolverine number eight. Yeah, this is a really good value-oriented book. Could have easily had it on the list. I think I talked about it on a list like a week or two ago, so um, kind of kept it off. But the thing about Wolverine 8 I always forget to show is uh, the back cover pinup. With, uh, this is a Rob Liefeld back cover pinup, and it's a really cool one with, like, Wolverine in the middle surrounded by, like, samurais. Really cool kind of perspective, but, uh, yeah, I, oh, I love the, the back cover pinup. This, this is a book, I want one more. Yeah, I got one in the CGC 9.8, I got a pretty decent raw copy as well, and I want one more in the CGC 9.8, because, uh, kind of goes well with my Hulk 340s too, but... Yeah, maybe in an auction, you get lucky, you can buy that for about $125. Um, I'd probably be willing to pay up to $150 for it if it was looking really nice in a new case. Just a, a, a classic value type book that hasn't really increased in price that much, but I think has some potential for sure. Uh, oh, you know what? I think I forgot to bring out that other one. My next one's a Detective 583, which I actually have in the CGC 9.8. I forgot to bring it up. Uh, it's the first Scarface and Ventriloquist, so really cool, kind of underfollowed Batman villain, and there's not a lot of these on the census, so usually, I've saw this one go for 200 before, uh, I've also saw them go for like 225, I paid 250 for mine, and um, I remembered around that time, like there were some completed listings getting up to 300 in this book, because it's a really cool cover, and it uh, there's less than 100, I'm pretty sure, on the census, and if you're into, like, Batman villains, it's just one to get, because I think Scarface and the Ventriloquist is so cool, and it's just kind of one of those only in Gotham Batman uh, villains that are, is just really psychotic and cool, so definitely some potential with that book, Detective 583. Um, next one, honorable mention, X-Factor number 7. Yeah, this is uh, a book I've tried to get a couple times, and I remember once I was, like, outbid last minute, uh, last second. So yeah, just a book I've never come across of. But X Factor number seven is the first full apocalypse with a cool apocalypse cover. And uh, for this book, I think, you know, in this environment, I don't think it's heated up too much. Like before, usually, you know, uh, you maybe usually get really lucky at sort of the 225 level. But um, I think uh, uh, 250, I think, is what I see quite often for like really good looking one, 250. Uh, maybe if you're a little more patient and you want to get a really good value on this one, you could look to get it near 225 maybe. I think I saw one before go for like 200 and that's when I kind of took notice. I remember seeing one like six to eight months ago it was go for 200 and I was like, that's way too cheap for like a first full apocalypse, how cool it is and such a big villain, X-Men villain. One to consider for sure. Uh, next one, I almost put this one on the list, Uncanny X-Men 129. This is the first Kitty Pride and the first White Queen, and the first uh, Sebastian Shaw. So, yeah, this book I think is 
is a great investment grade book. The CGC 9.8 ratio is like, I think it's like 9%, like a really low rarity in the 9.8. It's really expensive because of that. We'll get into talk about the price in a sec. But I think this one really cooled off after, um, yeah, Sebastian Shaw and Emma Frost were in that uh, X-Men movie. Like, it was like six or seven years ago now. First class, I think it was. But they were pretty cool in that, and this book was rare, and it really blew up in price, I would say. But now, I think for this book, like 1100 I think would be a great deal. I think it's worth that. Um, you know, CGC 9.8 white page is looking really good. It's got a great cover. It's one of the best covers out of this whole run. Plus, you get all those first appearances. So, yeah, really wanted book. And even though it's 1100 it's one of those books that, yeah, it's expensive. But when you think about it value-wise and you compare it to other books, there's not very many other books from that uh, sort of age with that 9% CGC 9.8 ratio. And that's why this one does get expensive. But yeah, still one to consider on a value uh, type of list. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 244, First Jubilee. Yeah, I think this one maybe hasn't taken off as much as First Gambit, so it fits more on a value book. So uh, consider this one. Hopefully you get it under, 250, or under 150, sorry. Uh, but I think some of these are even going over 150, kind of pushing maybe in that sort of 150 to 200 range. But it kind of depends on how good it looks and everything like that. A uh, last one, too, on our honorable mentions here. Avengers 181. So this is the first Scott Lang and the first, like, new lineup of Avengers team. So kind of the first new team. This book really heated up during uh, these Avengers movies where Scott Lang was introduced in those movies. And um, there was, like, a, you know, where... Spider-Man came and like there was the whole new team uh, Infinity War kind of thing and uh, This book really heated up during that time, but now it's a I think a great value book I was looking on eBay and there's like six or seven of them online right now trying to be sold um, and You know, I think a good price for this is A really good price is like three hundred dollars right now. I've saw them go for that before three hundred dollars um, that would be like a real, yeah, I think a quick good sell would be about $300, but maybe even up to $350, I would look to pay. Most people online, like I was looking on eBay, are trying to get kind of $450, $499. So usually in an auction or if you're patient from a motivated seller, this one goes for like $300 to $350 in this environment. But back then, uh, during the Crazy Avengers movies, they were $450, yeah. And um, it is like a 1980 book, so it's quite old, but really cool covers, got a lot of colors on the cover, and all the Avengers. I'm pretty sure it's like a George Perez cover. And yeah, um, one to consider, I think, that hasn't really taken off lately. So, yeah, okay, I think get some ideas there for sure. And I just, I really just was kind of thinking some of the books I have that sort of have low CGC 9.8 ratios that look pretty good, but aren't like super heat, uh, heated up with this whole stimulus check market. And yeah, that's what I kind of wanted to get across on this video. But uh, concluding up, we'll get into some top picks. Star Wars number one, yeah. I just think there's, like, the big potential in that book because the brand is so big. So you don't want to kind of, like, not have be you know, you don't want to not have one, basically, because, yeah, I think in the 9.8 it's great, too. The 9.8 ratio looks great, but just given how big the brand is, and, you know, maybe if you're a baller, go after the 35-cent one, which is super rare, and... That, I think, has even potential, too, because, again, yeah, Star Wars is such a big brand, and there's so much potential, I think, for Star Wars to come back huge, like, over the next 10 or 20 years. Like, I don't know when it's going to happen, and, but given Disney's got the billions behind them to do it, like, I wouldn't bet against it. So, yeah, Star Wars number one, I think even now, it's sort of heating up with that Mandalorian. I still think 1,100, 1,200, you want to get in there and buy a nice one in the 9.8 white pages. Uncanny X-Men 141. Yeah, just still a pretty affordable book that you can get in that burn era of uh, X-Men that is just classic. Classic cover, so much nostalgia, and I think a lot of people feel that way about it. Not really like a big first appearance, although you get the second Phoenix, Rachel, but um, uh, one to consider, though, uh, and it hasn't really heated up too, too much. Silver Surfer 44, yeah, I think the Infinity Gauntlet, I'm on the end of it being special, not, you know, just a weapon, and who cares, like, I'm thinking, like, wow, like, there's never been a first appearance of a weapon, like, denoted on any comic, really, so that makes it even more special for me, that's why I have two. Um, Mad Love, yeah, probably Mad Love is my favorite 90s book, like, it's, that's, and I have, like, if I didn't have New Mutants 98, like, New Mutants 98's great, too, and can't go wrong with that, but... 
given the low CGC 9.8, it's lower than it's more rare than uh, New Means 98. Uh, Mad Love with that 17.5% CGC 9.8 ratio, and plus New Means 98 has like 3,000 of them on the census. Mad Love has 253. So, um, yeah, my favorite 90s book, Mad Love, so I gotta recommend it. And The Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, is my favorite modern right now. Um, sort of special, especially if you just are kind of looking at the facts, yeah, because low CGC 9.8 ratio, under $200 price, and then there's like Young Avengers, which is not even close to as rare at 250 in price, so that just doesn't make sense to me. Like, there's a lot of room to sort of catch up there. Um, okay, that's gonna be it, yeah, a couple top picks there, and, yeah, I think this video, it's, uh, uh, this video and our ice cold one that we just did, our cold as ice or whatever it was a couple days ago, you watch those two videos, you'll get like 15 or 20 good ideas in this environment, I think, because, um, uh, yeah, again, the, the CGC 9.8 market so hot, so I just think, right, at, in these times, you want to think the other way, you got to think about, okay, what hasn't heated up, and I got to be patient on the ones that did heat up, so... I think that's the way to go. So, um, yeah, I think it's a wor worthwhile to think about value in this environment. All right, uh, if you haven't already, I invite you to join the team and subscribe to Team CGC 9.8. Hit the bell to get all our latest notifications for videos and add me on Instagram and Twitter, too, as well. But, yeah, okay, uh, pr pretty long video, but uh, s some great ideas, I think, and some classics to kind of go over again, but also some ones to, uh, yeah, the Iron Man 170. Yeah, that one even, too, is a great one for for the price, I think. Okay, um, thanks so much for watching, and uh, if you did want to message me, had any questions about whatever it might be, message me on Instagram. But thanks again for all the support. I'll see you on the next one.